And now joining us to discuss how Israel and the United States will be impacted by the targeted killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani is Middle East expert and chairman of the Professors for a Strong Israel, Dr. Mordechai Kedar, and the founder and president of the Jerusalem Washington Center, Gideon Israel. Thank you both so much for being with us now. Uh, l let's start with you, uh, Mr. Kedar. Who is General Soleimani? Well, this man is the arch terrorist. I would describe him as some of the combination of bin Laden and Baghdadi together, no less. This is the man. He was actually the long arm of the state of Iran in order to devastate everyone who opposes Iran in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in Lebanon, everywhere. And this was the man, the right. executioner of the Iranian regime. So the question then is why now? The U.S. had intelligence, Israel had intelligence well, about this his is whereabouts. The question, this is the question which I always ask. How come this man is already working for 22 years, devastated in the Middle East, and really, why now? Why not 22 years ago, 21 years ago, 20 or 19 years ago? Do you have maybe a response to that, why this attack took place now and not in the past? Well, I think it's important to understand what the Trump strategy in terms of the Middle East and, and the broader world is in terms of military conflict. Trump is not looking to get America into another war. And he will only respond when America, when American lives are in danger or a very specific American interest is in danger. And, and therefore, um, what, what some would say, there was an attack and therefore there should have been an American response, Trump will only attack when he feels that is absolutely necessary. And this attack on the, on the embassy was an attack on, on America, was an attack on American lives. And when Trump attacks, he's not just going to do a tit for tat, he's going to go for the head. Well, now we're seeing, you know, over 3,000 troops being sent um, to the Middle East. And I guess the question is, you know, what is going to be the consequence of, of choosing to take out Soleimani? What are the ramifications going to be on Israel as well? well it, go no ahead. No doubt, Iranians are looking for a revenge. Right. Because for them, it's a must. Yet, they have the time. It doesn't have to be today, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. They have all the time in the world. However, the, actually, the situation depends on Trump. As we remember, Bashar Assad bombed a place named Khan Shikhun in April of, 19, of two, uh, two, uh, 2017, three months after Trump came to the White House. Trump sent 59 Tomahawk missiles on an airport named Shoerat and actually destroyed like 10% or 15% of the Syrian air force. And everybody says, well, oh, new, new president, new policy, but it didn't happen because after this strike, uh, Trump looked how uh, the Russians are devastating Syria, how the Kurds are being pushed back, how everything, and he didn't really act on the Syrian arena in a significant way. Right. The question is, what will be today? If this will be a one strike, just like what was there in April 17, or he will continue the military pressure on Iran or not? I have no idea. Well, Gideon, I want to ask you now, you know, a lot of critics have, have come out and made this into a partisan issue. They're saying that this is Trump's Benghazi in reference to the attack in, the, uh, in Libya during Obama's presidency. What are the differences between the responses, between the situations, and, and do you agree with Trump's handling overall of the situation? Well, I think this is certainly much different because, uh, because in Benghazi there were plenty of requests for uh, reinforcements in terms of troops, and uh, even when the attacks happened there were requests for troops to come and nothing happened, and I think Trump said instead of even waiting till the embassy might really be in danger, I'm going to send in an overwhelming amount of troops and I am going to prevent an escalation from happening. So there's certainly a difference between the way Obama and, and Trump handled it. Now in terms, of, in terms of the way Trump handled it, I think this goes along with his, with his outlook in terms of if I'm going to act, I'm going to act with overwhelming force. And I think that's, wh that's what he did here. I want to go back to the issue of the ramifications, though, for Israel more specifically, because we saw the Mount Hermon uh, ski mm -hmm. resort was closed over the weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, Israeli communities in the north were put on high alert. What, how is this going to play out? Aviv Kochavi said last week that Israel, Israelis should be concerned. Well, it all depends on what will Hezbollah do as the long tentacle of the Iranian octopus in Lebanon. What will do the Iranians in Syria? Don't forget that there are some Iranians in Syria as well, and mm -hmm. they might have some unpleasant weapons which Israel have not yet taken care of. 
So the arena is a bit uh, dangerous. We have to uh, go to sleep with one eye open. I think I think there's also something that um, Israel can learn from the strike on Soleimani, and that is and that is something that this American administration, unlike other American administrations, is not only interested in Israel defending itself, but rather it's interested in Israel defeating its enemies decisively. And that's what Secretary Pompeo said in his famous Cairo speech. So I think Israel can learn that just like this administration is willing to go to the, the head of the octopus, as some have said, Israel should look at its enemies and ones that it has confrontations with, like Hamas, and if, if so, Hezbollah, that this is the time not to have another a war of attrition, but rather to decisively defeat the enemy once and for all. All right. Well, thank you both so much for joining us with this update. Thank you.